Welcome back to the 16th part in this series, building this to-do list application. In this one, we're going to hopefully hook up the delete request to the front end so that when we delete an item using our to-do list uh, written in Angular, that's then going to be propagated to our API backend so that effectively our action, our delete action is going to be persisted. So if I show you what that means, if I mark something as done, I press done, at the moment it does disappear from the front end, but then when I refresh, you can see that the API didn't get a delete request, uh, all these say get, so it didn't get a delete request, it didn't update that back end, it didn't delete this item, uh, and therefore when we refresh, it just gave us that item back again, which is of course not what we want if we've sort of removed it from the list. So the first thing I want to do is I want to think about, so what do I actually need to, uh, send the API to make a delete request. And at the moment, this, this is the part of the code, this remove function here, which is called when we press the done button. And so at the moment, we just set the to-do list as empty, and then we re repopulate it with all the items that aren't marked as done. And then what I want to do in addition to that is I want to make a, a request using the HTTP service, and it's going to be a delete request this time. Now, the delete, just like the others, it does take a URL, so something like to do forward slash API, forward slash a primary key, for example, 14. So the delete uh, request, remember we, we made the API so that it, it required a primary key so that it knew which object to delete. That's using what's called the detail view. Now, at the moment, this is a hard-coded ID, so it's not going to necessarily delete the right item that we select from the to-do list. So we need a way of uh, firstly storing that ID in the front end, which we're not currently doing, uh, even though it's in the API response, and then secondly, uh, putting that ID, whatever it is, into this, this string, which is then going to help us uh, generate the URL for our delete request. So the first thing that I want to do is when we get the response from the API, so in this HTTP GET request, once that's done, we've got the response, uh, and we set the other attributes, I want to also set to do dot id equal to response dot data for this particular iteration uh, dot id. So what that should do is, in addition to these other two, it should uh, make us so that we have the id, whatever it is in the back end, it should be available to us in our front end. So the only other thing that I need to do now is I need to put that id in this delete request. So, at the moment, let's, let's just try this to see if we're making a delete request currently. So, I'm going to go back to my to-do list, and let's just mark something as done. And, at the moment, because 14 doesn't correspond to an item that we have, it won't delete anything, but it should send a delete request. So, initially, when we tried to make the request the first time, I noticed that the request wasn't going through. Now, I went to the Sources tab, and I saw that actually this bit of code that we just wrote to make the delete request, uh, in my case, wasn't there. So that meant that the browser was just caching the JavaScript files, and in our case, we wanted to update the JavaScript files, and therefore I had to go to Refresh, and Empty, Cache, and Hard Reload. So when I, when I did that, and then I refreshed my page again, and then I was able to make that delete request. So if you have that issue, it's probably caching validation. Now that we're making that request, I can show you that we're getting a 404. If we go to our server, we, we can see that it says not found to do API 14. And this is what we'd expect because the primary key doesn't correspond to an item in our API, in our API response. So instead, we need to make this value here dynamic. We need access to the item which I want to delete. Now, where it is at the moment, we have access to, for example, scope.todo list. I could um, put that in here, but that gives us access to the entire list. So we don't know which element ID we are going to be wanting to delete. So in this case, I need to find all of the items that have been marked as done. And then if they have been marked as done, I want to then make a delete request for that item. So I'm going to sort of modify this if statement a bit. And I'm going to say if it is done, then we're going to make a delete request. And if it's not done, so I'm just going to say else. So if it's not done, then we can 
uh, we can just do what we did before. And now what we can do is instead of saying 14, I can sort of add the value here. So in this case, because uh, I'm doing four each here, uh, this value x is our current to-do item. I could rename that to to-do actually because that makes a little bit more sense and it's a little bit more readable. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to-do dot id because we've now got that association. We're, we're just referring to it like we did here with to-do dot id. And then I'm also going to do a plus so we have that uh, training slash. Let's go back to the browser and I'm going to try this again. So if I do API test, I'm going to mark that as done and I'm going to try to delete the item. So I'm going to press done. Now it sends a delete request and we get a 204 response, which is what we'd have expected from our API view. And so we get a HTTP 204 no content, which is expected because it's a delete request and the most important thing is that it's gone through and deleted that item. So if I go to the API now and I refresh this, we can see only one item. So it's deleted that in other words. If I refresh again, this to-do list goes back to the API and gets only the single item that we needed. Uh, it doesn't get both. So that is how you can delete items from your to-do list uh, using a RESTful JSON API.